Many of us are happy on Linux with whatever software alternatives are available, but if you have a hard requirement that you absolutely need this application, making that swap can be a little bit difficult. And I know a lot of people just don't care about them, but for a lot of other people out there, video games are that hard requirement. I've said it before and I'll say it again here, if I could not game on Linux, I probably wouldn't be a Linux user. This, for me, is a hard requirement. But nowadays, we have Proton making this considerably easier to do. But some people out there still wish that native ports were a lot more common. But native ports are a very tough problem. And recently, the Factorio devs put out entry 408 of their Friday Facts, and this includes a section on Linux. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Factorio is a game. Factorio is a flowchart that looks like a game. My brain is a little bit too smooth to play Factorio, but I know a lot of people out there really love the game. But regardless, the Linux section here is written by a developer called Rygard. Now, Rygard is a fairly new addition to the team, only joining in 2023, but he's been a Factorio modder since 2017, and his primary roles at the company are expansion programming and Linux support, as well as being an advocate for the modding community. He has been daily driving Linux for multiple years and have fallen ever deeper into the black hole of customization and minimalism. Do you know how we can confirm that? Firstly, he has a .files GitHub repo. That already puts you in a very small category. This repo includes things like Zathura, NNN, Dmenu, i3, and various other applications that would absolutely be at home on my system. And you can also see a tmux comp here as well. So I think it's very clear we are talking about a Linux user here. So let's see what they have to say. Why don't most games support macOS and Linux is a sentiment I often see echoed across the internet. Supporting a new platform is a lot more than just changing some flags and hitting compile. Windows, macOS, Linux, and the Nintendo Switch all use different compilers, different implementations of the C++ standard library, and have different implementation quirks, bugs, and features. Obviously, game engines and game libraries do help to alleviate some of these issues. But even though in Unity and Unreal, you can just click compile for Windows, compile for Linux, it's not just that simple. You need to set up CI for the new platform, expand your build system to support the new compiler and architectures, and have at least one person on the team that cares enough about the platform to actively maintain it. This is very true. And this is a big reason for why most Linux ports are great temporarily because they have some amazing developers come in and do an outsourced port. Then nobody maintains it. Then the dependencies start to fade and then updates don't get added to it and then eventually is basically unplayable. If you're a video game, you will likely need to add support for another graphics backend, Vulkan or OpenGL as well, since DirectX is Windows exclusive, which adds another thing that also needs to be maintained. This is a big reason why most devs just don't, because Proton nowadays is really, really good. As long as they are not doing things that actively break Proton, most games just work out of the box now, and pretty much that's limited to very weird DRM systems and anti-cheat systems that haven't had their Linux support enabled. So many developers will take one look at the Windows market share and decide that it is not worth the trouble to support the other platforms. Also, with the meteoric rise of the Steam Deck and Proton, it is easier than ever for game developers to ignore Linux support because Valve does some black magic that lets their game run anyway. This is not said in this post, but I've heard other devs say so. If you have a native Linux port, it's very likely that even though it is going to be your smallest market share, it is going to be your largest group of bug reports. Not because your Linux support is bad, but because Linux users are far more used to making a bug report. They've probably made previous bug reports with their distro or applications they're using. So what is the biggest challenge of Linux today? Well, you can see it right here.
Wayland. My first self-appointed task after joining the team was to add Wayland support to the game. Now, SDL, the library that Factorio is built in, theoretically does support Wayland, so all you theoretically need to do is enable the Wayland support, and it just works. However, it's not quite a simple plug and play. Wayland provides protocols in the form of XML files that you can then use the Wayland scanner binary to convert into C program and header files. Being relatively new to C++ at the time, my initial solution was convoluted and involved checking the generated Wayland protocols into our source tree to be manually regenerated every time we updated SDL. A few months ago, armed with a year's worth of experience, I improved this workflow to automatically generate the files as part of the build process, so they're always up to date with the protocol XML files that STL ships with. Factorio has supported Wayland since 1.1.77, but it needed to be explicitly enabled by setting STL video driver equals Wayland, and nobody wants to do that. For Factorio 2.0, I added the drop down to select your preference in the GUI. Yay! Basic convenience features that are a nightmare to implement. Now, wouldn't it be a great world we lived in if enabling Wayland support was all you needed to do to enable Wayland support? Well, the problem is the GNOME exists. And GNOME does something that everybody hates them for doing. Client-side window decorations. And no matter how many times they are told that this is not a good idea, they keep going down this route. Once Wayland support was implemented, I received a bug report that the window was missing a title bar and close buttons called window decorations when running on GNOME. So on the X11 side, it would look like this, which is fine. On the Wayland side, it looked like this. There is nothing along the top. You could still drag the window by holding down the meta key and moving the window around, but you couldn't drag it from the bar you'd expect to be at the top. The reason for this is most desktop environments will allow windows to supply their own decorations if they wish. So you can do this on KDE, you can do this on Sway, you can do this on pretty much any desktop you want to do it on. But we'll provide a default implementation on the server side as an alternative. So in the case of KDE, we have this bar along the top. This bar is being supplied by Plasma, but if an application wanted to, it could make a custom bar. On GNOME, the only option is to make a custom bar. If you don't make one, there is no bar. GNOME, in their infinite wisdom, have decided that all clients, all applications, must provide their own decorations. And if a client does not, they'll simply be missing. I disagree with this decision. Don't worry, so does the rest of the Linux ecosystem. Factorio does not need to provide decorations on any platform, nay, on any other desktop environment. Not on Windows, not on macOS, not on KDE, not on Sway, not on X11. Nothing else except Wayland GNOME. But GNOME can abuse or use, depending on where you are, its popularity to force programs to conform to its idiosyncrasies or be left behind. For context, there is a Wayland protocol for dealing with server-side decorations, and GNOME from the start has wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. So much so that there are still GNOME developers today who think Wayland doesn't care about server-side decorations. It's only GNOME. Everybody else wants them. If Rygard just happened to be one of my viewers, I would not be surprised. I have said GNOME in their infinite wisdom about so many stupid decisions that desktop has made. Look, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Here is another problem. This one is specific to Sway. Now, if you are photosensitive, look away in three, two, one. Okay. This seems like an issue. I don't know. What do you think? Looking back at the recording, that isn't as bad as what's on the website. I don't know why. I don't know what happened with the capture there. That's a lot worse if you check it out for yourself. 
I use the Sway Window Manager, and a particularity of this Window Manager is that it will automatically resize floating windows to the size of their last submitted frame. This has unveiled an issue with our graphics stack. It takes the game three frames to properly respond to a window resize. The result is a rapid tug of war with Sway sending a ton of resize events and Factorio responding with outdated frame buffer sizes causing the chaos captured above. I spent two full days staring at our graphics code but could not come up with an explanation as to why this is happening, so this work is still ongoing. Since this issue only happens when running the game on Wayland under Sway, is not a large priority, but it was too entertaining not to share. Considering the way most people are probably going to game on Sway, which is the window being in full screen and it never leaving full screen, yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. Should it be fixed? Yeah, absolutely, but eventually. Dynamically linked libraries. In a C++ program, there are three ways to load slash include a library by including it in your source binary, static linking. Having the system load it when your program starts, dynamic linking, or your program loads it explicitly after startup, dynamic loading, or what I call runtime linking. We have many libraries such as SDL, Fontstash, and Lua that are statically linked, but Factorio 1.1 has many dynamically linked libraries. Many dynamically linked libraries. Among these libraries, are X11 and Pulse Audio, which are being deprecated in favour of Wayland and Pipewire respectively. This causes a compatibility nightmare because if any dynamic dependencies are missing, as in they are not installed on your system, the game will not launch. This obviously will not do. The presence of these dependencies confuse me, because we utilize SDL for most of the low level syscalls, audio and video and SDL relies entirely on runtime linking, an investigation revealed the source of most of these dependencies to be Allegro, the low-level library that we utilize for most of Factorio's alpha phase, but we have since replaced with SDL. The only remaining use of Allegro in 2.0 was as a secondary audio backend in case a user experienced issues with the SDL audio backend, but that was pulling in all of these other dependencies that didn't really need to be there. The SDL backend has been very stable for a long time, so the time was ripe for its removal. This eliminated 123,000 lines of code from the game and drastically reduced the number of dynamic dependencies. This now going from this. I think that might be an improvement. But it turns out, Allegro was not the only thing requiring us to link against X11. Back in 2017, we received a bug report that a user could not paste large blueprint strings into the game, and Oxide, one of the developers, fixed this by adding support for X11 incremental clipboard transfers to our GUI's backend clipboard handler. I was hoping to utilize SDL's built-in clipboard functionality, but unfortunately SDL does not support incremental transfers. This means there are three options. Continue linking against X11, which obviously they don't want to do, requiring users to install X11 on their system to be able to run the game. So if you have a completely Wayland system and you want to play the Wayland version of Factorio, you would need to install Xorg. Obviously not the desired result, and I don't want to mess with static linking. Figure out how to do runtime linking and implement that or upstream our incremental transfer code into SDL so we can leverage SDL's clipboard functions and other SDL-based games can benefit from our work. As you might guess, I chose the third option. The work to upstream our code is ongoing, but should be done in time for Factorio 2.0's release. So there currently is an open issue for this right now. That is support X11 incremental clipboard transfers. There's not a ton going on in the thread, but... Hopefully, that gets merged. Whilst there are some challenges, not everything about supporting Linux just makes things more annoying. Sometimes you can do things that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Asynchronous saving works by using the fork syscall to essentially duplicate the game. The primary instance, the one you interact with, continues playing, but the newly forked child runs the saving process, then exits on completion. 
I have used it for many years and have never had issues, but the setting remains hidden because there are a few unsolved problems with it and requires a significant amount of RAM to work. So this lets the game save in the background without any interruption to the game. Not like a couple of millisecond delay or anything like that. Just the game goes, it saves in the background, and it works perfectly. This has been but a glimpse of the work I've been doing to ensure Factorio on Linux is the best that it can be. There are still many open bug reports and other issues, but I am generally happy with the state of things and can confidently say that Factorio has great Linux support. It is one of the very few games out there that is actively being supported on Linux, and this guy right here is a big part of the reason why that is the case, and that's awesome. I would love more developers to actually care about Linux and try to properly support it, but without someone like this who actually cares about the platform, it is much better just to rely on Proton and just make sure Proton isn't actively being broken. But what do you think? Do you care about native Linux games? Do you even care about gaming whatsoever and have no idea why you watch this video? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, and the Berapay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Rygard. If you happen to see this video, uh, great work, I guess. I don't know what else to say.